Hey, so I just wanted to go over how to create antique mirror materials because it's one of those things that I see even seasoned uh, 3D artists sometimes having issues with. Um, so I just wanted to go over how I've created these three uh, just so you can see what to do and it's not a problem. So first of all, if we jump into the scene, uh, I'm using this scene again, which I've used in some of my other tutorials. Uh, I just like the way it renders. It's kind of set up nice. Uh, like I said before, some of the materials I made over a year ago now, and they're fairly complex. So the scene, I think to render out this, it took seven, eight hours on my machine at home, and it came out like this. So nowadays I'd make the materials a bit easier. So it would render quicker and I don't have to wait so long to get the results. Uh, but here, we're just going to cover these materials and I'm going to cover this material first, just basic antique material, mirror material. And it's really basically simple. Oh, this is it. All I've done, all you need, really, to make it is you just need a picture and you can put that straight into your reflect map. Okay. My material became a little bit more complex simply because I wanted to adjust this and change things around. If I open a preview window, you'll be able to see this. So that's it there. I'll just go over the actual material I created and why I did it this way. First of all, what you need to know is simply that the reflect map, all it does is shows how much do you see the diffuse color and how much do you see what's in the environment. So the white here, you're seeing completely the environment and the the black you're just seeing is a diffuse. If I change this color, make it blue, make it whatever, you'll see all these blacks change to blue. So we'll just cancel that. Now I've got Fresnel simply turned off and I've got this map in there and glossiness set at 1.0. Uh, the BRDF here is Blin. I would actually now set it at this. Again, I created these materials, you know, a year ago or so and it was before we had Microfacet GTR GGX, so it gives you an idea of how long ago it was. But when I created it, it was with that. So what I've done is I simply, I started with this. And if you look at this image, I just got an inked edges. And I wanted that basically set into the render around the edge. You see these little edges? I wanted the edges just a bit darker. And that is simply what this map is for. So then on top of that, I wanted some dirt inside the mirror. So to do that, I created a composite map. To show you that, you simply come here, maps, general, and you come down to composite, and you can just drag and drop that and put that into any of these, and you get a composite. Then you just double click, and you can add more layers, as many layers as you want. So I had that going in, I had this one coming in, and I changed it from normal, which is by default the opacity set at 100, to multiply. So that just brings in the darks. So if you look, this is the image I used to dirty up the map. Now this is a little bit too much black to my liking, and you'll see the actual image I have is like this. Uh, if I open a preview window, it's like that. So. That's different, but the only difference here is I simply took this image in here and then I just, you know, this is closed. I opened this up and I inverted it, uh, you know, and because there was so much black, it just gave me more white. Other than that, you can see these are the same. The only difference being that one of them's been, you know, offset and the tiling here, I've adjusted that to get it how I like it. Uh, and the only reason I adjusted these was to get it so that dirt appeared where I wanted it and not somewhere else. Now, again, even though I inverted it to get less black going on, it still wasn't what I wanted. There was still too much black going on. So to handle that, see here, still too much black. If you keep an eye, that's black. And if I put that in there, a lot of it disappears. So to handle that, I put a mask on this. So if you look at this mask, this image is only going to come out where the whites are. And to show you what it is, it's that. So only where the whites are are you going to get this image. And I simply put that on, put that on as a mask, and then I had this coming in here. Now, here, there was now too little going on, you know? 
when I did my test renders, I was like, I wasn't getting as much as I wanted. So I came along and I grabbed an output and I put it in here. And what I did with this output was simply enable the color map and move this. I just put a dot in the middle and pull it down. So if I get rid of that, so I clicked here, add point. First of all, I enabled the color map here, otherwise you can't do anything. And I clicked here, add a point, put it in the middle, right clicked over here, actually I right clicked on it, clicked Bezier Smooth, pulled the handles up like this, and you know, I had it going in there. And basically I just watched this. I looked at it and I just clicked in the middle and just pulled down. And I just got it where I wanted it. And I said, yeah, that's I like that. And then I left it there and I did my test renders and made sure it came out the way I wanted. And that was how I created that was how I created that. So that's it. That's the antique mirror. It simply has you simply need a dirt map going into the reflection area and if you maybe you can you know control that you can either control it with an output you can control it with a color correction if you like you know you can come along and here you can go advanced and you can adjust the gamma uh, better if I just show you like this uh, and here I just click on here and if I just bring this down it'll get darker and darker you know, you can do it that way if you want. I chose to do it with an output and control it in here through this. Uh, but these are just different options of effectively doing the same thing. And that was it. That's my antique mirror. And obviously you have to put a UVW map on your object. And then it came out like that. You can see those dirty edges. You can see the dirt in the middle. Now for the second one, it's effectively the same. It just has some color in there. So if I go back into the material editor and I click on here, uh, this is again, a little bit more complex than it needs to be. It's effectively exactly the same as the previous one. Um, here, we've got the edges. Here, we've got that map I was talking about. Here, we've got another one, which masks it out. Now, the difference being that I wanted that gold color, you know, if you get a lot of reference images, let me show you some reference images. Okay, these are some reference images which I collected. So here's a dirty antique mirror, another antique mirror, another antique mirror. And you can see a number of these are kind of just slightly golden here. This is kind of golden. And I find often clients send through a kind of goldeny color reference if they want an antique mirror. So... So we just wanted a slight gold on this. So normally if you create a gold material, you simply, you know, take this off. This is very color. I'm just going to right click here, click copy, and I'm just going to paste this into reflection slot, paste. And that's a simple way of creating, you know, either a colored metal or a colored window or something like this. Um, let me show you. See that white's not white. It's that kind of light goldy color. So that's normally what you do. So here it was just a matter of getting this into the earlier, the earlier dirty antique mirror material, which I had. So put that in the reflection map. These were exactly the same. All I did was I created this V-ray color and all I adjusted was this. I just got to a nice light kind of goldy color, which I liked. And in test rendering, I thought it worked out fine. And then what I did, if I opened a preview window, I was cheating this a bit. I was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and figuring things out. So on this composite, what I had was I thought, well, if I put this in here into layer three and change, put it on as a color, you know, you've got all of these, this is like Photoshop. You can go through and you can add in and change around these different things and set them to whatever you like. So I put it to color because all I wanted to do was adjust the color. So if I show you without, that's no color, that's the first mirror material. With it, that brings in the color. But now, my problem was, I didn't want these to just be completely black. I wanted them to have some of the color which I'd adjusted and put in here. So, by playing around with layers, I created another layer, I put it in there, and I set it to overlay. And if you look here, you can see how it's changed the color. 
have a preview window. Okay, so it's without it on. See, it's this color. These blacks are very black. I put it in, and it adjusts. And these blacks start to become brown, and they start the dark start taking on color here. The darks don't really have any color. They're just still black. If I take that out, you can see it's gone white and black. And here, it just brings in the light area. Sorry, put it there. In the light area, the light now changes, but the black stays the same. And here I discovered by putting it in overlay, those blacks start to change. So that's why I did that. I was just playing around and I figured, oh, that actually works quite well. Otherwise it would have been, you know, the other way would be you just take this and you can take this image into Photoshop. I could invert this in Photoshop. I could take this color, put it in Photoshop, overlay it in Photoshop and make the changes. But instead of doing that, I just adjusted these settings here until in the render it came out the way I liked it. And if you look in the render, it came out there. It came out pretty good, I think. Um, if I compare it to the references, it's kind of close. Yeah, it's not as dirty as that one, but it's kind of close in color to this. It's kind of a similar feel. So that's how that was created. Now this one, you know, if you look at these reference images, you often get these panels. And here they're kind of more dirty around the panels, around the edges. And that's kind of what I wanted to replicate. I wanted panels and I wanted it to be dirty in the edges. And so that's what I created here. So this one again got a little bit more complex, but not that complex really. Bear in mind, these are all just building on the previous one that I already had. So this and this are effectively very similar. Uh, the difference is I decided I didn't need to have this one showing the edges. I mean, to be honest, even though I kind of like it, they look a bit fake, I think. If you look along here, they don't look that real, that great. They look fine. It's an added detail. And my eye doesn't get drawn to it if I just look at the image, but if I look at it closely, I'm like, mm, I'm not so sure it was such a good idea. Uh, something else could have been done that was better. And that's sort of what I incorporated in this. So in incorporating it, it was fairly, it was fairly simple. Um, what I decided I needed to do was some geometric changes and using this V-Ray distance texture. So. I put that in first and all the other layers are the same. This is that same image inverted. Again, we got the same mask and we got the same colors, adjusting the color of it. And you can see all of that, you know, here you've got those same lines that these ones have. You've got that same dirt up there, same here. Because basically my V-Ray distance texture just brought in the dirt here around the edges. It didn't bring in any of this internal dirt in the middle of it, which you see. So that's, what this does. This brings in the internal middle dirt that masks us out so it's not too hard, heavy. And this one adjusts the color and gives it that gold tinge. It was simply about making these dirty edges and the best way to do that. So if we have a look, this is simply a dirt map. It's that dirt map. And that's what I used for all of those edges. And I used V-Rain distance texture um, with a near distance showing this dirt map. And I set the distance here to 50. So again, V-Ray in the maps here, if you go to V-Ray, you'll see you've got V-Ray distance texture right here. You can double click it and bring it in. And by default, the distance is 10. And this depends on your um, units that you're using. Now I use uh, millimeters, you know, and if you wanna look at your units, you just come up, customize. Uh, sorry, not preferences. You go customize unit setup and units one millimeter. Okay, and normally I don't know why this is off. I set this to millimeters. This is your display unit scale and this is your system unit scale. So you can have your system unit scale that you're using set at one. Like if maybe that's set at millimeters and you can set this at centimeters. So all of your displays here will be centimeters, but your actual unit will be millimeters. 
which to me gets confusing. So I always have these the same. And this is something which I always set up um, when I first open Max. So I come in, you know, when I install Max, and it's pretty much the first thing I ever do is set up the, the units and set this up and click OK. So my point was is that this distance texture, that is 50 millimeters. So if your units are centimeters, it's going to be 50 centimeters. If your units are meters, it will be 50 meters. Inches, whatever it is you use, this that's this is monitored by that. So by default, it comes in at 10. So that would be 10 millimeters in this case. So I changed that to 50. I left everything here the same, um, apart from that. And then what I did was put this bitmap in a near texture. Now. You'll see I've got this object here, V-Ray Dirt Box. Originally, I tried doing it with V-Ray Dirt, and it just didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. Um, and so this was my workaround to V-Ray Dirt not working. So I'll show you what I created here, the geometry. So what I did here is I simply had a plane. And I adjusted the length to 3 and the width to 2. And then I went up here. I converted. Right click there, convert to edible poly. I went 4. I selected all of them. And I clicked bevel. And bevel's pretty wicked. You know, it comes in and the height and, you know, you basically bevel it. And if you click up here in the first one, you can go group or you can go local, normal. I went by polygon, so I think I came out maybe 10, and here I did, if you want it to go, you know, if you go positive here, it goes outwards, so I probably went about minus 10, have it come inwards, um, yeah, good to go back, and you'll be able to see, yeah, that's about right, 10 and 10, and I click OK. So that was the geometry that my material was assigned to. And then a control A, just select everything, come out of isolation. Just go perspective and zoom in. Okay, let's line these up first. Top Z, W, to move it, just slide that back there. Okay. Come out of isolation by clicking here. Isolation is all Q, by the way. Went to uh, isolation. It used to be older versions of Max Alt Q went out of isolation as well, but now it just goes isolates again. So T P Z swing around, and you see this little guy right here. So this I created. Let's isolate these. Let's show you what this guy is. If I just click him, Alt Q, he's just a frame. And I made it really easy. I just simply had boxes. Okay, so what I did was I went in top view, I went here, and I created a box. It just went like that, across, and up, and that's fine. 1.76, it's fine, it doesn't really matter. I was in a bit of a brush. Let's show you V, back view. And then I pulled it up. That was just a glitch in the graphics card there, showing that still after I'd moved it. I pulled it up to here. And then I pressed, no, uh, then I converted to Edible Poly. And I went 5 to get it into sub-object element. Control A, just to select this one. Then I press Shift and drag up to here. Clone to element, keep it there again, did the same to there. Okay, and I did the same, Shift, drag again to there. Okay, and I pressed E for rotation. Pressed again, Shift, and just, well, that's not doing it. Press A to bring on angle snaps. And you might need to right click here and change your settings here. Um, I've got angle set to five degrees. It's normally all I change that and then this enable axis constraints. Uh, I press shift. I can take my finger off shift now and just click that round so it's at 90 degrees. So okay, W, move that down. See, it's still showing there. No, it's not. So just a little glitch going on with the graphics driver for some reason. Just pull that round to there. I went into sub-object 1, which is vertex. Selected these here. 
and I pressed W at some point to move them around. Just drag these down. And then went again back into element mode. Selected this one, press shift, dragged it to the middle. Okay, and shift and dragged it to the outside. Now, the thing is, I didn't want this to be renderable. So I gave it a name, dirt map. Actually, it's not, is it? It's um, distance map dirt, we'll call it. And I right clicked here, object properties, renderable, and click that. So now it won't render, but it is there. Now, what I did next was if I bring up the material editor in here. I just clicked add and I clicked it. And that's it. So now what you have is you've got this dirt coming in in a distance of 50 millimeters from this object. And this object isn't going to render. And as a result, it came out really nice. You get this. Now you can play around and look at your, dirt, your distance map settings and adjust things. But that's what I did, and that was how I got this dirt around these edges. Now you'll notice also you get some slight slices going on here. And there, and there. You know, do you understand what I'm talking about here? Let me just zoom in a bit and show you. See that line there? Goes right along there, that dark line there. And there's another one there, and there's another one there. And that was just some data I added. And I simply added that by again coming into the geometry. And these are all splits. What I did was four, clicked on here, and click grow. So that's grown out there. And let's click detach. Okay. Grow, detach. Okay. Oh. Grow, detach. Okay. Grow, sorry. Grow, detach. Okay. All right, so that's everything done. Um, and now these are all different objects that can move around on their own. So the next thing I did was attach them all again. Attach. Boom, boom. All right, so now they're one object, but now if I go into element mode, these are different. And what I did was I simply move these a tiny amount. And, you know, you can click on this one, like you can also adjust them here. And you can click on here and you can just come down like one millimeter and one millimeter. So basically I just adjusted this stuff. And by adjusting this tiny amounts, um, if you look here now, you can see you start getting these cracks and those cracks are enough to create those black lines. And Again, it's just a matter of testing until it comes out the way you want it to be. So that was it. That's how I created those materials. So yeah, that V-Ray distance texture coming in, 50 mil, going into layer one with that image. And as a result, I got this uh, beautiful result on this map.